My sermon message is entitled, Recalculating. Let me begin with a short prayer. O oh Lord, may the words of the sermon, which I am about to offer, be spoken clearly, and may they convey a message that has some meaning and inspiration for all who hear it. In your name I pray, amen. Picture this. You get into your car prepared to go somewhere that you have never been to before. To make matters worse, you're traveling with someone else who is doing the driving, but who does not know any more than you do about how to reach your destination. This was the situation that my late wife Elaine and I found ourselves in on several occasions, especially after I retired in 2014. When I was able to accompany her and do the driving on more of her business trips to clients' homes. While the car we owned did not come equipped with a built-in global positioning system, better known as a GPS, Elaine had purchased a handheld GPS, which she could plug in and which she was very adept at operating. Unfortunately, I was not always so adept at listening to and following the GPS directions. And whenever I would make a driving error, I would hear the mechanical GPS voice say, recalculating. Sometimes if the mistake was big enough, it would tell me twice, recalculating. Recalculating. On one occasion that I can recall, after making several wrong turns in succession, I had evidently gotten us so lost that after three recalculatings, followed by a long pause, all the GPS could say was, when possible, make a U turn. Eventually, the GPS did get us back on track. And despite those misadventures, or perhaps because of them, I am glad we always had the GPS to get us and keep us on the right path to all our destinations. Preparing to take a long trip to a previously unknown destination while following roads less traveled is certainly not the only reason to have to do some recalculating. I think it is fair to say that any significant change in one's daily routine, whether it be one time only or a temporary change, or one that is permanent and affects the rest of your life may necessitate recalculating some short or long-term goals. Consider what may happen after you have an accident or an illness, or after a fire or a flood, or after starting a new job, or buying a new home or a new car or selling your old home or car, after getting married, having children, or after the death of a loved one. Any of these or other changes that you can think of, whether they put pre-planned or totally unexpected events, will lead us at some point to re-examine at least some of our plans and goals as well as to make whatever changes that are necessary. Each of today's scripture readings give us some insight as to the qualities and characteristics of people who are considered by God to be blessed. 
as well as those who are being warned by God to re-examine their lives and redirect the paths they are following as needed. The prophet Jeremiah quotes the Lord when he says in chapter 17, verse 5, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. Then in verse 7, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Psalm 1 tells us in part, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked and do not take the path that sinners tread. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The list of blessings in Luke's gospel is similar but shorter than the commonly we, than those than the list we may be more familiar with, commonly referred to as the Beatitudes, which is found at the beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. The word beatitude means happy or blessed. And some versions of this gospel use the word happy instead of blessed. In addition to the blessings listed in Luke's gospel, Matthew's version adds these. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. But it is in Luke's gospel only that we hear Jesus speak about a counterpoint to each of the blessings listed. Blessed are you who are poor, but woe to you who are rich. Blessed are you who are hungry now, but woe to you who are full now. Blessed are you who weep now, but woe to you who are laughing now. Blessed are you when people hate you, exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. But woe to you when all speak well of you. I believe the four woes that Jesus speaks of need not be considered a final irrevocable condemnation of all people to whom they may apply now, but they should be considered warnings of the potential distress and sorrow that could befall any one of us if we fail to put all our faith and trust in God and if we fail to recalculate and redirect our lives as he leads and guides us through all the daily challenges we may face. All the blessings listed might be considered the ideal personal traits to obtain, maintain, and demonstrate in our daily lives. All the potential woes or warnings, I believe, could still become blessings if we are willing to change our ways and align our thoughts, words, actions, and reactions in accordance with God's will and guidance. If more people who have an abundance of material riches would share more of what they have with those in need, then maybe the potential woe of being rich could be turned into a blessing. 
if more people who are laughing now because all is well in their own world would share some of that joy, peace, and comfort with those who weep for the pain and suffering in their own lives, then maybe the potential woe of laughing could be turned into a blessing. If more people who are full now with no hunger for justice and righteousness would be willing to demonstrate their support for just causes that can improve or eliminate any social, racial, economic, or religious inequality, then maybe the potential woe of being full could be turned into a blessing. If more people whom others speak well of would be willing to risk being hated, isolated, ridiculed, or even persecuted because of the way they demonstrate their faith and love for God in all their thoughts, words, actions, and reactions, then maybe the potential woe of being spoken well of could be turned into a blessing. As you reflect on all the blessings and woes that are detailed in today's scriptures, prayerfully consider whatever recalculating and redirecting God may be calling you to make in your own life. Some changes may be minor and relatively easy to make, while other changes may be major and more difficult. Some changes may involve things you always dreamed of doing, but never found the right time. Some changes may involve things you never dreamed of doing and never wanted to do but now you have no other viable choice. Recalculating your goals and the direction of your life may not be an easy thing to do, but if you believe and trust in God, he will open the right doors for you and show you the way to go. Each of us, need only say yes and follow him. For me personally, I have had to do a lot of recalculating since Elaine passed away just over two and a half years ago. Reluctantly, but out of necessity, I have learned to do some things that I never thought I would or could. I know I am still very much a work in progress. But in the same way that I have gotten this far, thus far, I trust that my faith in God, the love and support of my biological and church families and friends, as well as the doors God has opened for me to serve productively and to keep busy here in this church and elsewhere. I trust and believe that all that will lead me ultimately to where God is calling me to be. For all of you who have also lost loved ones and or have had other reasons to recalculate and redirect your life, I pray with you that your faith and trust in God, as well as the love and support of your families and friends, will ultimately lead each of you to where God is calling you to be. So the next time you hear the soft voice of God's spirit, your internal GPS, if you will, 
calling that out from deep down in your soul, recalculating. Listen and follow. Whatever changes in direction that God is calling you to make. If the voice tells you make a U-turn, listen even more closely and follow even more urgently the new directions that God gives you. Even when some changes may seem impossible, don't give up following where God leads you. Because with God, all things are possible. May our faith and trust in God be strong enough to make it so this day and every day. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Vinny, for that wonderful message. This is a time for discipleship invitation. You have heard the message of recalculating your life, the blessings of God. He said to put your faith in God. Brother Vinny encouraged us to put our faith in God, put our hand in God's hand, and he will guide us. Recalculate our life. If you're on this tonight, if you're on today and you want that, you want to recalculate your life, we invite anyone who wishes to make that commitment to follow Christ, to recalculate your life. Uh, if, you, if you have a prayer request today, you can call us at telephone number 914-668-3334 or email us at umc1mv at verizonness or you can just send, send an, a, a message in the chat and our own um, virtual worship leader, Velma Mitchell, she will make sure that it will be directed to the right person. Recalculating, recalculate your life. It is the gift of God. Come to the table. Let us pray for you. Let us jo join with us and we will be there for you. Amen. Our, our own Vinny, Vinny will be the time of prayer. Amen, amen. Let us be in prayer. Oh God, as we continue to reflect on your words in today's scriptures, we acknowledge with gratitude all the blessings that we have because of you. We also acknowledge that many times we disregard these blessings and we ignore your calls for each of us to use those blessings constructively to serve the needs of others. We acknowledge that when we don't listen to your voice, we make wrong turns that can take us down the wrong paths in life. But you are always calling out to us, always ready to help us overcome whatever obstacles that are hindering us from following you. When you tell us recalculating and make a U-turn, give us the will and the strength to follow the new goals and the new paths that you need and want us to follow. We ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.